as you know, apparently, the chicken and the egg thing has been solved, by the way. Like, which came first? Egg first, egg. Well, yes, because all birds apparently grow from rep- grew, evolve from reptiles. Reptiles, yeah. And reptiles come from eggs. Now, the question of which came first, the reptile or the egg, that's a completely different matter altogether. But the, the egg definitely came before the bird. So the question is, what came first, the reptile or the, the reptile egg, not or the, the chicken egg. or the egg? Exactly. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Greetings, EastEnders fans, and welcome to another episode of Albert Square After Dark, your weekly EastEnders podcast. This week, discussing the episodes broadcast between the 23rd and the 26th of October 2023. Hi! Did you miss us? Apparently you did, and some of you didn't know we were away. We tried. We tried oh. to tell you. We tried to tell you. All right. And we couldn't have been clearer that we were away, but some of you missed it. So I'm sorry if you missed us last week, but we missed you and we're back. And hurrah to that, I say. Uh, Join And who else is back is Ree. Hello, Ree. How are you this week? Hello, Rob. I'm all right. Hello. Thank you. I do think I do think we might have caused a bit of confusion, though, because we Maybe. did say oh, if it's a big week, we might record. But it yeah. turns out we wouldn't have been able to anyway, because Rob didn't know when he didn't even know the <laughs> right day when he got back. So that no. would have happened. I don't organise <laughs> these things. I just go on holiday and turn up. I turn up I turn up where I need to be and I just come back when I need when I'm told I need to come back. I thought it was Friday. I didn't end up flying back till Saturday. But I had a lovely time in Italy because I climbed Mount, I climbed Mount Vesuvius. Oh yes. Oh yes, I'm a mountaineer, mate. Oh, it's Everest next. Oh yes. Oh God, that'll be something. But well done to you, mate. I can't believe that. Look at this little necklace I've got on here. Right, it, this is made. This little black thing on the end of this, on, on the end of oh, this, yeah. is made. Is made. I got it from a gift shop at the top of Vesuvius. There is a gift shop. So that's a climb and a half to get to work every day, isn't it? Can you imagine? And uh, uh, anyone for anyone listening, he's pointing at a necklace around his neck. Yeah, this is really going to work for audio <laughs> listeners. However, yeah. <laughs> the, the pendant on the end of this is made, apparently, out of the lava from the 1944 Vesuvius eruption. Oh, yeah. Soz. So this is going to be this is going to be like a talisman going forward for me. I'm going to t- I'm going to be it's going to be like my whole life is like I'm a contestant on Deal or No Deal. I'm going to be I'm going to be holding oh, this. this necklace and thinking I can do this. Oh this. Oh this. Sorry, this is just my talisman from climbing Mount Vesuvius. This is a sign yes. that I pushed myself all the way to the top of a mountain and I got this pendant. So I can do it. Is my is my thing in life now. I can do it. So there we are. Um, I went Come to. Rob. Thank you, thank you. I went to Italy, by the way, for my birthday, which was mm-hmm. on, when was my birthday? Tuesday, it was my birthday on Tuesday. And Re, very, very kindly, has sent me something. I don't know what it is yet, because I haven't Oh, I'm so, I'm so scared, because I've not seen it in Ta-da. person, so I'm really hoping it's what I'm so, expecting. <laughs> bear with us, audio listeners. <laughs> yeah, but do. I'm going to battle my way through the cardboard. Ooh, oops, it might ooh. be quite packaged, actually. It is quite packaged, ooh. Is it a book? Uh, <laughs> hang on. I'm actually. I've got. I've got butterflies in my tummy in case it's all well, completely wrong. It's not, it's not broken in delivery like the last thing that you sent me. That was so annoying. Oh uh, yeah, that, well, that was uh, annoying. Oh, oh, it's a mug. It's a mug of some description. Oh oh oh, it's a big mug as well. Good size. Well oh done. good, yes. Good, yes. <laughs> I love it. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, we've got Albert Square after dark written on it. That's amazing. Oh. I love it. Well oh, done, yes. Ray. Well yeah. done. Oh, my God, it's got both pictures. Oh, that's why yeah. you wanted those pictures sent to you. you See, sneaky now you know why I'm on a so, <laughs> so uh, if you're only listening, what I have got here is an amazing uh, mug, which is a good size. And if you remember, for the 35th of EastEnders, they did some promo pictures of Sharon or Letitia Dean. She did an interview dressed as a queen like in a stamp and the both pictures are emblazoned on this mug and i absolutely love it and it's got albert square after dark written on it this is excellent Rue. well done i like that a lot awesome. thank you thank is you is it big as much. well because i made sure yeah. to order a large that's size a good one that's, because... a, that's a good it's a good size yeah I like brilliant that. I'm really pleased with that I'll, I'll tell you what i'll do i'll move my tea from this mug into this mug there you go hey god it must there be good go. there you go yeah that do you know what Filled the mug as well. That's good. That's good. Thank you very much. Right. Cheers. Very welcome. Just spilled it everywhere. That's a good start. (laughs) There we are then. Right. Uh... So, um, obviously, we weren't here last week. So, we'll we'll have a little bit of a sort of 
chin flab, con flab, chin flab, chin wag, con flab. That's the two words I was mixing up there. Chin flab, uh, right, but chin flab with me, to be fair. <laughs> same, mate, same, just wobbling away. <laughs> Audio listeners are very lucky. Um, right, so let's just briefly discuss what we missed last week because two new characters mm. were introduced last week and I absolutely love them. <laughs> so Priya and Avani arrived last week. What yes. are your thoughts on Priya and Avani, Ree? I absolutely love them. And I'm quite surprised because I've seen people not being that keen on them, which is really surprising, especially Avani, saying that she's a bit too of a stereotype of like someone that age and it's not very accurate yeah maybe i'm old but it seems quite accurate to me so it shows my age clearly i mean we'll talk about priya in a moment because i've because i've seen nothing but universal acclaim for priya it's like that's all that's all i've seen avani do you know what the issue with avani is is that she's Mm. a kid and kids nine times out of ten always get a bit of aggro from the viewers when they first arrive because nine times out of ten they normally introduce a kid as some sort of troublemaker gobby like kind of like parent like kid sort of thing and she is very much like her mother um yeah, true. but i think she's going to be really interesting Avani, because very quickly when she arrived there was a sort of indication that denzel was sort of raising her eyebrow his eyebrows at her so i think what Avani is going to be is a really useful little bomb to throw into that young character group mm-hmm. because they all get on very well in that character group there's nothing they you know they're all very supportive of each other so if Avani was to come in uh, and sort of <coughs> Denzel was to sort of wander into her direction. That not only is obviously going to cause issues between Denzel and Amy, but imagine Nugget and how he would feel if his best mate suddenly started having an affair with his sister. Yeah, I was just thinking mm. that. Oh, awkward. awkward. Because brilliant, brilliant, right? So what? This is what I mean. So lots of story potential there straight away. I think she's going to be mm. a really useful sort of interesting uh, addition to that character group. Uh, and it's interesting to sort of see how Nugget and her have gotten on really, really well. They're they're really, really close and they're getting on really well, which is nice for Nugget. Gives him a new kind mm-hmm. of thing to interact with. So that's really interesting. So, yeah, I like Avani. I think she's going to be interesting. And Priya um, is brilliant. Priya is incredible. I love Priya. Like, I cannot remember when a new character came in and had such a strong week for their first week. Like, the actress uh, looks like she's been in it for years. Like, she's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, the interaction she's having with the Panasars, that's instantly fascinating. She's a great character, really sort of on the ball, clearly feisty, had a fight with Stacey in her first couple of days. And if you have a fight with Stacey in your first few days, then you're, you're pretty much made. That's all good. Love her, love her. Absolutely love her. I think she's brilliant. Yeah. And well, we'll discuss what's happened this week as well. But there's a lot of potential yes. for her as well, isn't there? Isn't there, Can just Priya um... is playing with fire. Can I just say that Mm. results of the poll that I did on Instagram. Oh, yes. And all followers on there. So I asked everyone, what do you think to Priya and Avani after that first week? Mm-hmm. And I was surprised that only 66% of people said love them and 34% said not so keen. I'm uh, actually quite surprised at that. I think, you know, in this, I think in this day and age, 66% ain't that bad. I think that's pretty good. For a, first, for a first week, I think that those people, yeah. I think they're going to be won around pretty quickly with Priya and Avani. I really okay. do. I think there's a lot. Of, Priya especially, you know, I think, I, I just think she's great. And I think people will warm to Avani as well once the storylines get started. I do. I'm yeah. very excited for the future with these two. It's very, it's very, very, very exciting. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention from last week was the really intense scenes between Suki and Nish. Nish stepped up his Ooh. abuse somewhat, you know. God, that man's an mm. ass. It still says to me, I don't think anyone deserves the floor at Christmas more than Nish. I have said it for right from the start, and I still think it's Nish on the floor. I'm convinced. I don't. It's going to take a lot to convince me that it's otherwise. To be honest, it's I still too think it's obvious. Nish. It's too obvious. But I know why you're saying it clearly. But it's just almost too obvious now that I don't think it's, it's going to be him. Is it too obvious though? Because I've seen a lot of I the theories that are flying around like fighter jets right now i've seen people think that it's jay on the floor i've seen people think i've you told me that someone said it was zach on the floor you know oh, what I mean? yeah like, i've seen a few people say zach yeah yeah, yeah so, so i don't think and it's that's that why obvious. I, yeah whitney if, is if, believing yeah i see i don't think it's that obvious if people are thinking that zach of all people might be on the floor so but i you think know. i think that's why because i think people are trying to look for the least obvious mm. person on the floor now because mm. We've been told expect the is. unexpected. Shrimpy's <laughs> dead yeah. Christmas Day, I'm telling you now, it's shrimpy. Oh, Kim, where's Mug? 
Look at me with my show. I love it. I love it. So, yes. So, let's get cracking on with this week's discussion. But we missed a good week last week, it has to be said. But Priya is uh, very much not quiet for the start of the week. So, we shall start talking about what Suki, uh, Priya and Nish have been up to this week. First of all, in this week's Albert Square After Dark. So let's get cracking on with talking about uh, Suki, Nish and Priya. Now, the thing is with this week, there was sort of four stories overall, but only one of them was like a really big story. The rest of them sort mm. of was not filling in for time, but they were sort of there as, as in sort of smaller discussion points. So we'll start with Suki, Nish and Priya. <laughs> Priya is uh, basically playing with fire, I think it's fair to say, isn't it? Very, very quickly, she's got her eye on Nish. She has no idea the danger she's getting herself into there, has she? Uh, no, but also <clears throat> gross. Like, you know that that's Ravi's dad. Why would you do that? That's I mean, I wonder if that's half of why she's doing it. I think she just wants to hurt Ravi at this mm. stage because Ravi obviously is trying to make... not trying to. Well, she, he is trying to make life difficult for her. And try, he, he didn't want her to be in the Panasar house whatsoever. That's like Ravi's worst nightmare. Like He wants to kind of keep in contact with Avani, but he doesn't want Priya anywhere near the situation. So mm. I reckon that there is an element of her just wanting to wind Ravi up, and what better to do that than to sleep with his dad? Yeah, but do you? Th- but I was just going to say, do you think she actually wants to take it that far, or do you think she's just trying to, you know, butter him up a bit? Do you think she's intending on taking it to that extreme? I don't know because it was in, there was an interesting moment last week when they were talk when they brought up Ranveer, and it seemed that mm. Ran Ranveer had actually tried to. From what she was yeah. saying, tried to sexually attack her at, at one mm. point. So we knew. So we kind of got from that that this Suki wasn't Ravi's first, um, wasn't Ranveer's first. Mm. Um, so that was interesting. So I don't know whether she's seeing any sort of darkness in Nish at all. I think she's just seeing him as someone that he she can just take advantage of because she's doing the whole sort of like, oh, look at my legs all out. So there, people keep looking at my legs, Nish. Look at my legs. You know, mm. and just 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 being a bit of a strumpet in that regard. So, um, and Nish being Nish is sold, I think, because she manages to get Nish to take her out shopping because Suki criticises her wardrobe once. Uh, and so she manages to get an entire new wardrobe out of Nish with the promise that he's gonna, she's going to dress him up as well. So Nish turns up in like a T-shirt and jeans, <laughs> which was an interesting and a fashion jacket. choice. And a jacket, you know, like the trendy old guy he is. Um, but what I love about this, I have to say, is the fact that she is blatantly kind of flirting with Nish in front of Suki, and Suki's kind of stunned in there like, yeah, and <laughs> go care. for it, love. Don't Welcome care. to yeah. it. Off you go, then. Good luck with <laughs> yeah, that. I, honestly, that's been my favourite part of it as well, <laughs> Suki just being like, crack on. And crack on, love. Doing me a favour. Doing me yeah. a favour. Go for it. Yeah. Much. Yeah, I mean, the, the stuff with Suki and Nish last week was so intense. I thought <sighs> Belvinda Sokol was incredible last week. She would have got I a gold star. They... I think they both were actually with that. They scene. were, yeah. That Navin was Chowdhury, something yeah, else for sure. It's always you always kind of forget to compliment the the actor of the villain sometimes the villain. in that situation. Mm. And Navin Chowdhury was brilliant last week, I thought as well. Her, I think him and Balvin the Sokol work so well together. Um, you know, you, you always kind of forget about that when you've got the likes of Suki and Eve. You know, the, you kind of flutter your eyelashes mm. at the gorgeous relationship between those two. But you know, those two also have chemistry on screen as well. They work really well together. Um, and yeah, there was some really strong stuff with the Panasars last week, which sort of continued into this week. Um, so how far do you think Priya's going to take this? I'm wondering if it's going to end up being that he makes a... I don't know, would it be too similar to what happened with Ranveer, that he tries it on with her and she turns him away and he carries on, you know? He tries mm. to sexually attack her. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought him capable, to be honest. And then after that scene where... Um, Suki last week, I'm a bit like, oh, maybe you are more capable of the physical side than I thought. Yeah, because I sort of wonder how receptive Suki is to when Nish makes a move on her, as he did this week. You know, Suki mm. wanted to go home and have a lie down the chin. He was kind of like, I'll join you, shall I? And kind of gave her a really creepy kiss on the cheek. So I sort of wonder how much, to kind of put it delicately, how much action he is getting out of Suki or whether Suki always manages to sort of bat him away or whether she finds herself basically forced into it, which is another kind of topic of conversation altogether. Um, so I don't know whether he, if he's not getting the action that he wants at home, I wonder if he will start sort of looking elsewhere because he doesn't respect Suki. You know, that's kind of quite apparent. 
So I do wonder if he'll sort of be like, yeah, it's my house. I can do what I like. She's in my house. You know, I'm the man of the house. I can do, I can do what I like. Priya's flattering him a lot, isn't she, yeah. as well? Like, Big she's time. complimenting him all the time, which Suki doesn't do, let's be honest. No, no never. <laughs> so I love, mm. like, you see what I mean? I just love that Suki's like, crack on, do my job. Then that's Same, absolutely it's been fine. my favourite part. When, like, Priya was trying to rub it into her, like, inviting Nish for a drink, and Suki was like, yeah, oh, yeah. do I need to act like I care? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hilarious. Whatever. Go for um, it. And it's the, I, I do like this kind of developing rivalry between Suki and uh, Priya as well. That's fun. That's a lot of fun. Those two are really sort of zinging off each other really nicely as well. Do you think that it might end up that Suki warns Priya off though and says you don't know what you're getting involved with? Like, Maybe. I'm trying to do it for your sake here. There is that don't possibility. Don't go there. I can see her kind of getting quite attached to Avani at some point as well, because obviously mm. I think she will look at Avani as like maybe a second chance. Like I think a lot of the Panasars are doing with these two new ladies that have arrived in their life, like Ravi certainly is. And I wonder if Avani to Suki might be a second chance to make up for any mistakes that she made with Ash. So you've got mm. this sort of younger, um, sort of susceptible girl to having this, is it grandmother figure? I think she would be, wouldn't she? In terms yeah. Of, I think, uh, yeah. She's oh, about step grandmother, isn't she? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So I wonder if, like, you know, she would be react quite well to having this new grandmother figure in her life, and that her and Avani might get quite close, much to Priya's annoyance, I'm sure. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think that's. I can't wait to see how this develops. I really, 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 really can't. Again, tells me that Ravi's not on the floor Christmas Day because I think there's too much interesting stuff going on here to kind of kill Ravi off at this stage. Complete. I really don't. We think could it's Ravi say the all. same with Nish, to be fair. You could, but I do wonder how much more, how much worse Nish could possibly get. I think I've I said this all along. I think that once he finds out about Suki and Eve, which I suspect might be soon, if yeah. Nish continues treating Suki like this, that she will sort of fall back into Eve's arms because those two haven't had a lot of scenes together over the past couple of months. Hey, so, I'm surprised at how much they've kept apart. I thought Suki's they were restraint. Be back at it week after. Yeah, I know Suki's got restraints. That woman. They haven't mm. had a kiss in months and months and months. And the reason wow. I know that is because Suki fans keep track. <laughs> they really do. They know what they know when their kissing scenes happened. So yeah, it's really fascinating all of this. I, I again just shows why the Panasars now Galati's added on as well. Like, they're just the most mm. fascinating unit. I love them. I absolutely love them. I can't wait to see how this kind of plays out. Really interesting. I mean, sorry, on this topic, kind of it's mm. about one of the other storylines we're about to discuss. But I think oh, yes. that Ravi's made another enemy. Did you oh, notice yeah. that Jay got the contact number from Ravi? Why yes. Why was that, I wondered? Is that going to be relevant down the line, maybe? I'm not sure. I kind of got the impression... I don't. I can't remember how Jay actually found out that Ravi is Gina. a dealer. Yeah I, yeah, I get that, but I don't know if we actually had a scene where Jay found that out. So I don't know. I don't know, is the honest answer. Mm. I feel like it won't be relevant in terms of the Christmas Day stuff. It might be relevant in some other way further down the line, but I don't think it's necessarily related to the six storyline, is my feeling. I'm not sure. I'm just overanalyzing everything. Well, now, this is the thing. I'm the like, close, well, the closer why, we get why to Christmas. Why we just put that scene in? Why couldn't yeah. we have just found out that it got it off that guy I mean, from the street that Gina were getting it from? You know? I mean, let's be real. It's very easy to get hold of drugs in Walford. We know this. <laughs> so mm. you could have got it from anywhere, really. So you, you might be yeah. right in that respect. Yeah, it's interesting. It is interesting. But I, yeah, I, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how this all plays out. So any predictions for what might be next in this story? Like, where does it go from here? How? So you reckon Priya might try and go there with Nish? I don't think that she's going to, and I think she's going to get into an awkward situation mm. where she's having to bat him off. And then, or somehow, like I say, Suki's going to warn her off and she's not going to listen. And then yeah. something like that. I, yeah, because there's, no li- there's no way she would listen to Suki about anything. Because no. she would just she no. would just think it was Suki trying to sort of what, like keep yeah. her away from her husband, effectively. Unsurprisingly, in, the, in any yeah. normal circumstances. Ooh, ooh, oh. ooh. Priya, Priya is going to discover about Suki and Eve and then use it to blackmail ooh. Suki. Ooh, do you know what, Mrs? I think you might be right there. That's interesting. Yes, I can see That'd that happening. That'd be good, wouldn't it? I can definitely see that happening, 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, I'll jump on that bandwagon. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, interesting. Right. 
Yes. There we go. That's what's yeah. going to happen, Rob. There we go. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Don't even need to watch it now. We know what's going to happen. There we are. There. Told, told you. you. Told you. I expect us to be smug in a couple of weeks when that happens. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Can't wait. Priya, Avani, welcome to Walford. Absolutely love them. <laughs> Very exciting. Right, ladies and gentlemen, next story. <laughs> On to Sharon, Keanu, and Karen now. And I realised something this week. Uh, and it's a horrific discovery. I was really unsettled by it. So it's my 36th birthday this week. All right, I'm 36 now. And it was Sharon's 54th birthday this week. I'm only 18 years younger than Sharon. I don't know why, but because, really? I, because, because Sharon has been in the EastEnders all these years, you know, I kind of thought that she was quite a bit older than me. I didn't, I didn't think Sharon was in her 60s or anything, but I think I just made the connection that I am only 18 years younger than Sharon. That's quite... I don't uh, know why. Yeah, I think it's because we've watched from being a kid as well. Exactly. So they always seem yeah. older, don't they? That's like me actually... real, I know. It's like me realising that I'm like 10 years younger than Ken Barlow. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a really yeah, sort yeah. of unsettling yeah. thing. I don't know why. I will try and be as iconic as Sharon as I grow older. I think I can do that. I've got the camp thing down to a, down to a T, so I can do everything else. That's fine. If I'm air blonde, I'm just sort of let it run down my shoulders. And... Just need but... to get a uh, photo of you with a crown on your head. Yeah. Sorted. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of those around somewhere. I'll find one. Uh, right, I've so... got one. I've got one. What are we oh, yes, you have. Yes, you have. Yeah, you have got a picture <laughs> of me with a crown on. I forgot about that. Right, <laughs> so, um, as we say, Sharon's birthday this week. And yes. Reese gives her a birthday present, which was very thoughtful of him. It's a make-your-own-will kit. <laughs> I mean... Well, can I say something about this? Go for it. It's made me decide I want to get a will. Okay. Sorry um, if that's a bit morbid. No, not at all. Um, my, qu- I mean, no, because you've got, you know, you've got a kid to think about now, so that yeah. makes perfect sense. So uh, my question. I thought my question- it was a great gift. That's a very good gift. Um, my question to you is, what you got, and can I have any of it? Am I in your will? Um. Oh, I might, I might leave you um any senders memorabilia I have. That'd be nice. Wrong. Yeah, le- that'll be what you a- get. Leave me a dot cotton mug. I'd quite appreciate that. All right. Yeah, okay, there we go yeah, then. I'll yeah. just go, as my all friends right. all die, I'll just create. I'll just collect. That's I'll yours, make it, Rob. I'll make it, thank That's you. Yours. Thank you. All, all right. I say. There we go. Perfect. There we are. Then that's that. Then. Um, <laughs> I mean, Sharon is perhaps a little perturbed by this gift, also because Reese bought her it. I don't know why Reese bought her a present in the first place. To be fair, it's not like they, apart from like the connection with the archers with Keanu. I don't. That's I didn't what think he they said. Were that close. Said- yeah. He Quite said, adorable, um, I know really. all my client. He said, I know all my clients' birthdays. I always get them a present. Yeah, which um, is very Reese. Yeah, it's very Reese. And to be fair, given the circumstance with his wife, I thought it was yeah. quite fitting actually that he was trying to go. Well, you never know what's around the corner. So that's true. That's true. It was quite sweet of Reese to be fair, despite the fact that it was quite a random present to give her. And I think Sharon was sort of like, uh, "Thanks, uh, maybe maybe flowers next year. That might work." But it was a sweet moment from Reese. But what this does do. It sort of gets Sharon thinking about the future because she realises, right, well, I live in Walford, so I might die any day. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> I might die tomorrow, in all fairness. You know, it's Christmas coming up soon. You know, it's always a gamble whether any of us are going to make it out alive at Christmas. And maybe I ought to make start making plans for Albie's future. So she decides to make Zach Albie's legal guardian should the worst happen. Understandable, I think. I think that that's a good idea. You know, you can't, and I, given the choice, I think I'd probably go for Zach as well. I actually was, I, I was actually pondering it because I thought it's so harsh to Keanu. It is his child. It is. But then yeah. I was like, but yeah. also, you know, I would say that Zach's been in Albie's life more than Keanu mm. has. And yeah. yeah, he is a bit of a flight risk, let's say, you know. Yeah, exactly. Still harsh, but yeah, I do, I do understand. I don't blame her. I don't blame yeah. her at all. I really, really don't. It's not like Keanu has shown, like that he is the most responsible person ever, is it? Like you can't blame no. Sharon really, and she wants to keep it kind of within the family as well. I get it. I get it. And you're right. It's harsh, but hey, <laughs> like I, I totally, totally get it. Um, Keanu, I think to his credit manages to kind of keep his outrage kind of bottled up, even though he clearly is absolutely furious about it. He's got an ulterior motive, isn't he? Exactly. I kind of wonder, like, obviously we know that Sharon is going to get at least into a wedding dress on Christmas Day. So this plan that they've got clearly works up until then. I just wonder whether Keanu 
will at some point forget about the plan and realize that I just love Sharon. As I, I can sort of see it going out like that, but then Sharon will find out what the original plan was and then it will all go to shit from there. Well, we were saying that when we the other week we were saying yeah. oh, it's going to end up like that, but now yeah. that Sharon's doing this with Zach, maybe not because mm. I think Keanu's quite angry actually now mm. that she's he going is. down that path and yeah, he's acting like he understands, but does he really? Yeah, because I mean, he's still got all this Peggy business going on. It must feel yeah. quite yeah. So he's kind of desperately trying to get a kid back in his life somewhere along the mm. line, isn't he? Because clearly things aren't going to go up that well with Peggy. Um, the other thing you, we've kind of got up for into consideration as well is Karen's exit, which must be coming up fairly soon now. Uh, so how is that going to play into things? Is that going to it, it? How is that going to mm. sort of influence Keanu's actions going forward? Depending on how Karen True. leaves, whether it's via a horrific death or for whatever reason leaves in a mm. black cab or a police car or something like that, you know. So I, 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 I. I think a lot of this is now going to depend on Karen's exit, how she leaves, why she leaves, and what impact it has on Keanu and the Taylors. Interesting that you're saying police car because they're making it so apparent at minute how much she hates Sharon. Mm. So is she going like to do something that's... insane? Yeah. Yeah, is it going to be something like that now that you've said that? Because it is like the way that she's, I know that she's always disliked Sharon, but at the moment mm. it's like, wow. Okay, yeah, uber hate. Yeah. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. She's going yeah. overboard for sure. I and mean, we are like like we said a couple of weeks ago, we we're definitely into sort of like, oh, Karen's leaving then. Because mm. they're just making her as unlikable as they can, which is a bit unfair to her. But we've been, you know, we've we've sort of we sort of discussed that the other week, and it's mm. it seems like that isn't changing until she leaves. I'm assuming that before she goes, we will have some sort of flashes of the old of the old Karen, where she is this mm. lioness mother, which has always been the best of Karen when she is in that role. So I assume we're going to see flashes of that going forward. And to be fair, all of this is kind of based on that motivation. You know, she is doing this for Keanu. Yeah, I was just thinking that. But just mm. the way that she's going about it isn't that likeable. Yeah. I just wonder what the ultimate plan is, because obviously Keanu said to Karen, didn't he? Like, oh, I'm, mm. I'm, well, she's not the only one who can take him out of the country. So what's your big plan then? Well, the thing is with this plan, like... Presumably, the idea is like Karen and Sharon, uh, Ke- Karen and Sharon, that would be a twist. Uh, Keanu and Sharon get married. And then I think Karen then thinks that Sharon, that will just kind of like, she's he, he would be entitled yeah. to everything that Sharon owns. However, when they last tried to get married, Sharon wanted, to, wanted Keanu to sign a prenup. So I don't know how she thinks mm. that how Sharon's mind will have changed considering what's happened since then. So the best I, thing I don't know. Is getting his name on the birth certificate. I would have thought. Yeah. I don't. I don't know the marriage side with custody, but I know that if your name's on the birth certificate, you have a lot it makes, more rights. It, father, yeah, it gives him. It? it gives him a better case. Yeah, I know. So, so getting his name on the birth so certificate maybe, is probably the ultimate aim, and then it's all good. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah. But even then, in terms of legal representation, Sharon's going to have a much better sort of. He's got much more at his disposal. He, will, he, he could have Richie. Mm. She's got she's got her sassy female lawyer, which we liked the other week. So she's got much better representation mm. in a in a in a court than Keanu could ever have or afford. Mm. You know, it's I, I they have not thought this plan through at all. They're not going to. They would never win this plan ever in a million years. Trying okay. to trying to fight against Sharon. What are you not, doing? Not going to happen. You silly boy. What are you doing? Silly, Isn't silly it? Keanu. There we are then. So, I mean, let us know in the comment section where you think this is going. How are we leading into Karen's exit? Is she going to die? Is she going to be arrested? Is she going to stroll off in a strop? What's going to happen? Let us know in the comment section below. We have a mystery, ladies and gentlemen. Re, who do you think might be the mystery benefactor that Cindy is now in contact with? This is very interesting. I like this. Who the hell is it? Well, it's either Dean or hmm. Max, surely. Yeah. I mean, Unless I... they've kept someone else very secret. I mean, I'd love it if they did. I mean, I don't know. Half of me kind of... At one point during the week, and I was convinced about it all of a sudden was that this might be a David Wicks return because it would make a lot of sense for Cindy to get in touch with an old business associate of hers, even even so she had an affair with him. However, the assumption that we're getting from Cindy this week, and it's always difficult to know when Cindy is telling the truth when it comes to stuff like this, is that she doesn't actually know him and that she's not even that sure of his name. So it was unlike it's unlikely to be David, I think. Um, so that does leave Dean and Max as my main suspects. I don't think it's Dean, if I'm honest. I feel like 
Dean, why would Dean want a pawn shop in Walford where he's been accused of rape? I don't think he would well, do that. Well, he had a barbers, didn't he? The hairdressers he had bla- before yeah, he had, in previous he had years. Yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah. that was his intention. Obviously, we know Shirley's been living with him. Mm-hmm. So he's trying to think her away to get Shirley back to Walford and supported with him. And that's yeah. the way, rather than relying on the Queen Vic, because obviously yeah. those Nick's, ties Nick have kind of gone for Shirley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but then we've not heard that Shirley's coming back, but we have heard that a lot of old faces are coming back. So maybe she's one of them. And maybe Dean's... I don't know. Um, oh, Max it's... would make a bit more sense. But again, what I... would he be doing with the pawnbrokers? I feel like Max is probably the most likely with this at this point which mm. excites me because i do want max back because there's a lot of story for max at the moment Same. um again why would he want a pawn shop that's sort yeah, of exactly. maybe, that's not very that's not a very max like business to want but then it's not going to stay a pawn shop even if cindy manages to get it it's going to turn into something else and maybe he had other plans for it um well this is know. the thing so this kurt benefactor mm. that they're now going to be yeah what were they intending on doing with it? Because are they still going to turn it into a pie and mash shop? Because in which case, I don't see why Dean or Max would want to do that. Exactly, Quite yeah. Honest. It's, it's. I don't know. I mean, it all depends on what has been said by Cindy at these little meetings that she's been going to. Mm. So we had Cindy having a phone call this week where she was talking to this mystery man uh, and she arranged to meet him. So she went off and had this meeting with him and then came back to Ian and said, right, so the guy, that because they were getting outbid for the for the pawn shop, basically, and they yeah. couldn't afford to go any higher with the offer that they were making. So Cindy kind of went to see this mystery guy and somehow managed to get it so that this guy has, a, has agreed to go, they, they basically agreed to co-own it. So... Which Whoever is a bad idea, in my opinion, I mean, going terrible. into business with of a stranger. Of Why would you do that? Terrible idea. And... And, sorry, mm-hmm. George has now said whether he's going to retract it again. He has said that he's going to give her half the money, so they don't even, shouldn't even need to go into partnership with someone, really. This is very true as well. And we do know from uh, some pictures released of the Square at Christmas, I'm fairly sure the sixth storyline is either being filmed as we speak or they now know. <laughs> Or they now know it's very, very exciting. I hope we um, filmed a few different endings so it doesn't get leaked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that none of them know what the actual... Well, because they're the going papers, to because someone's leaving, but... The papers are loving leaking yeah. stuff for EastEnders at the moment. It's really annoying. It's, um, it's annoying. But what we do know is that the pie and mash shop exists at Christmas mm-hmm. time because we've seen the we've seen sort of the outer set of it. Um, so that does exist. So whatever goes on with this mystery benefactor, the pie and mash shop becomes a thing so i don't know who this could be and my thought is max because obviously we know that lauren is returning and yeah. you've sort of got to wonder if lauren is like would lauren come back on her own i feel like there's more storyline to be had out of lauren if max comes along with her because mm-hmm. those two have got a lot of making up to do because they haven't really spoken that much since abby died so there's a lot of stuff there to be kind of unpacked obviously you've got cindy and the, i mean it would be very sort of soapy for Cindy to go into business with someone who it would transpire was basically responsible for her son's death. That would be quite fun to watch play out. Uh, you've got the fact that Max still doesn't know that Annie exists. So there's that to play out. I think I, my money at the moment is on Max, I have to say. He's a businessman. He Why he'd want to come back to the square and open that, I do not know. But because especially seems though he left basically thinking that he had nothing left in Walford. That's the other side of things. So I don't know. My money's on Dean. Okay. My money's definitely... So you're saying well, Max. I am yes. saying Max, but yeah, well... <laughs> this was unfortunate, yes. wasn't it? This was very oh, unfortunate. Oh, poor lass. Oh, oh lass. do you know what? Silly. Okay, silly so... Mi- silly mistake. Spoiler stuff here, all right? So if you don't want to know anything, fast forward, uh, fast forward quite a bit. There was a a photo leaked this week. Now, I don't think this photo reveals as much as people are claiming it did, to be honest. And I don't even think it's that clear either. But there is a picture from the actress who plays Avani's TikTok. Bless her. Exciting new job. And she's kind of going around taking pictures of the set for the fans because that's what, you know, that's great service from her. Fantastic. Unfortunately, it kind of looks... Like Matt D'Angelo, who plays Dean, is in the background of one of the photos. <laughs> Definitely her. is. Bless her. I mean, 
Is this the photo that people are saying is the leak of who's dead on the floor, by the way? People have been saying that. Apparently, there's another picture that's been leaked somewhere. I haven't seen that. All oh. I've seen, I don't know, but I don't know if right. that's the same thing or not. And I don't see how a picture would leak that. Um, it's, I think people are just assuming that because he might be back, that automatically makes him the body. Mm. And I don't think it does. I don't think this is as clear as people are making out. It's unfortunate for the actress, bless her. That was a real kind of unlucky move. I don't think that anything will come of this. Let's be perfectly blunt here. There are actors on EastEnders that have kept their jobs for much worse than they've been up to in the past. So I don't think there's going to be any sort of repercussions for her, really. And there shouldn't be, all right? She made a mistake. Things happen, you know. And I don't think that a Dean return is that surprising, considering what they have been building up to since February. Like we had, we've had suspicions Dean's coming back since February when he was first mentioned. All right. Wow. So for him to be back, I maybe, don't think it's all that maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't that much of an accident for all we know. Maybe, they maybe were like, not. let's get ahead of the papers and let's do it in a way that looks like, you know. Yeah, possibly. Why not? There. Why know. not? Why not? Yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't altogether, I didn't feel spoiled by the reveal of his picture. I don't think it was that surprising that Dean's coming back. Um, no, I don't. But then we've not. We're so, sorry. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. We have. We haven't actually seen any photos in the papers showing him going no. to studios, have we? So no. they they have kept it well hidden. If that yeah. is the case, I mean, you know, I feel like the way that they built this storyline up, and the fact that Linda hasn't got a man that she could potentially murder yet, because the idea presumably is to give each woman a man that they yeah. could kill off. We're still waiting for Linda's. We're still really waiting for Kathy's, unless unless yeah. her man is Rocky. Um, so uh, th- there wasn't going to be anybody else that Linda's body could be, other than possibly George, which I don't think was going was ever gonna was ever really kind of muted. So I don't think this is this surprising. All right, I I'll be honest. I don't want the body to be Dean. I don't mind Dean coming back, but I don't think it's I don't think the body should be Dean, considering we've had all these months of build up to or yeah. for all the other stuff and then for dean to sort of sneak in through the back door at let's say what november at the very earliest mm. and then sort of just be killed off straight away i don't i don't think that's going to happen i don't i i trust this story enough that that won't be the solution i'm hoping so as well because that yeah. would feel a bit clumsy to be honest if it yeah. was like especially when it's like you know being back for what six weeks or exactly and then it happens, exactly you like know? why would you there's a lot of story to unpack there you know so i feel mm. like it would be a bit it would shortchange it a little bit if they just now mm. then killed Dean off. I don't. I I get it. And apparently, there's a lot of theories that, that have been going around for months now that Dean is the body. So there'll be lots of people that weren't surprised at yeah, all by, yeah. by a possible yeah. reappearance of Dean. So I, yeah, it's it, it is what it is. Anyway, so that's all that. That's all to come in the future. I forgot what we were talking about now. It's a. It's, yeah, Cindy. Ian's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> So there is oh, all that. So whoever this mystery benefactor is, we will soon find out. You yes. think it's Dean, I think it's Max. We will see who is right. It's very exciting, though. I like the way they're doing this. A male character at some point is returning. We're not quite sure who it is. That's exciting. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, meanwhile, the knight's belongings from Marbella Knights have arrived at the Vic because they've sold the bar and they've just had all the... Have you ever done this? Have you ever had all your belongings sent on from your old, your old address? I don't think it's a thing in real life, is it? <laughs> Is that like who packs yeah, it? Yeah, but who delivers it? Well, who no, sends it off? He he said that he had it in storage, didn't he? They oh, that's in true. Storage yeah, yeah, the yeah. bar got sold, and seeing as that it's abroad, it's a bit more realistic. To be fair, anything goes on abroad, doesn't it? It's madness, yes. <laughs> <laughs> chaos abroad everywhere. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, you should try Italy. My God, the traffic in Italy is insane. They've got their own language on the road. Let me tell you, and they died about three times crossing the road. It was very <laughs> they're feral. Some of it, yeah, it's a bit it's crazy, crazy. chaotic. Mm. Um, so as they are going through boxes, Gina discovers uh, an old photo of an old, let's call it associate. Um, and you're sort of wondering, well, who's that? It turns out that this bloke is called Antonio. Mm-hmm. And frankly, I, uh, looking at the photo of him, I don't blame Gina for any of it. <laughs> do you know when she first took it out of the box? Mm. We were like, is that Dean? I was like, that looks a bit like a... Yeah, I think, every because we only had like brief glimpses of this photo. And I think the yeah. whole, I think all of the viewers at one point would have paused him like, who's that? Is that Dean? Who is it? Yeah, Who is it? Who is exactly it? Is that someone I we did, know? Yeah. yeah, so did I. So, and it, it's definitely not, it wasn't, I kind of worked out, it's definitely not Dean. That's a new person. We don't yeah. know who that is. Um. The Gina stuff then later ties into the J stuff, which we should discuss later. But 
all of that is really used as a device to sort of bring Cindy and Gina together. And a really nice scene, I have to say. I really like the Gina and uh, Cindy stuff this week. I'm a, do you know what? I'm surprised at how much I'm loving Cindy's return. Like, I'm loving Cindy. And yeah. what I'm liking is she seems to be using her manipulation skills, but for, like, good. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Do you know what I mean? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like trying to get things out of Gina and it isn't just for her own benefit. She's trying to get Gina to talk. Like she kind of manipulated her into sharing that, but it yeah. was for the good because it got it off Gina's chest and she could talk to her mum about it. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she kind of made peace with Anna this week as well. So those two were mm. kind of close by the end of the week. And now it seems that Gina and Cindy are on an all right footing yeah. at the moment as well. So mm. Cindy has sort of worked her way through not a huge amount of manipulation, I don't think, more circumstance than the yeah. fact that she, that she was there in order to comfort the knights, or to comfort Gina and Anna with what life was throwing at them at the time. So yeah. it's sort of it's sort of been helped by circumstance that she's there and that she's managed to sort of bring them closer to her. I still feel that Gina is maybe going to be a, take a little bit, is a little bit further away than Anna is, which you kind of suspect it was always going to be the way anyway. Um, but I, I think she's, she's, it's working. Whatever she's doing is working, and the girls are slowly starting to come around to her way of thinking. Even George isn't really giving her that much aggro now either. Now, mm. considering discussions that we've had in the past about George, by the way, I did very much notice a line that Gina said to George this week, and I'm sure you know exactly which line I'm talking about when she said to him, "Have you seen yourself when you're angry?" I noticed that. I took it on board. And let me tell you, with us being this close to Christmas, it feels like we need to be paying attention to lines like that. They feel relevant. So that was interesting. Uh, so, do you know what? And this week uh, I've well, been thinking, do you know what? Maybe I've been wrong about George. He seems no, all I, right, really, doesn't he? He's been quite reasonable with I, Cindy, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I still don't think that we're going down any sort of, like, he's an abusive husband yeah. pathway. I still don't think that. But I think the fact that he is... That what I've, And what I've always said about George, to be fair, is the fact that I'm sure he is when he's off on one, considering he's a 11-foot-tall, scary boxer, I'm sure he could be incredibly fierce and a dangerous person. That's always mm-hmm. been my sort of opinion on George. So I wonder if that is going to be relevant moving forwards. Again, this close to Christmas, you sort of need, I feel like we need to be sort of paying attention to those little moments and those little hints and those little lines because we don't know what we're going to have to be paying attention to moving forward into the Christmas period. So it's, mm. yeah, I noticed it. Don't you worry. It's 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 in there. I made a mental note about it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Thanks. yes. Yes. Um, what else was there for this, for, with this storyline? I mean, a, a nice moment between Cindy and Elaine. Are you liking that? Where do you yeah. think their relationship's going? Yeah, I'm enjoying their rivalry in this, mm. like, you know, they sat down and had a nice chat and Cindy oh, even lobster. thanked. <laughs> and Cindy thanked Elaine, didn't she? And said, thank you for being there for my girls. Yeah. Was that genuine? Because I felt like it was. She's winning me over Cindy. Whether it's genuine, uh, I don't know. I feel, I don't know. The thing is, it's Cindy. So you don't really, you never really sure whether you can trust her or not. The chances mm. are we can't trust her. But I do think that everything that she's doing about the girls is completely genuine. Yeah, yeah. My only thing with Cindy is that I feel like once she feels like she's got the girls where she wants them, I think her ultimate plan is to get back with George. That'll be her next move. I think that once she's got the girls on tow, I think what her plan next will be is to persuade the girls that her their dad will be happier with her instead of Elaine. I think that's the next point of her little plan. Mm. So I think that's to come next. And the but fact then that again, go on. I was just going to say it depends if this benefactor's Max or not, because that'd be that's an affair waiting to happen, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, I've, I've said this all along. I think Max and Cindy will be absolute fire together. Now, whether Cindy can overlook the fact that, I mean, let's be honest, she's living with with one person that's responsible for one of her True. children's death. So if she can have it, she can maybe have an affair with another one. That would be interesting. I, yeah, it's really? so, it feels like there's so much more to come, and it's really, really, really exciting. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Um, so obviously Gina is uh getting herself very heavily involved with the uh Jay storyline because this um this boyfriend we find we find out uh is the person that introduced Gina to drugs. Gina had a great week for me this week. I really, really enjoyed Gina this week. Uh, and we discovered that this is a guy that got Gina into drugs and he ended up dying in an accident because he was high on drugs. Doing speed bombs. I've never heard of this. 
Oh, speed I thought, balls. I thought you said this? speed balls. Yeah, yeah speed and I'm balls. Like, what, I don't know what, what that is. We're balls? old. We're old. I could have done balls with Cindy of going. Speed? Is that balls literally of what speed. it means? Is like that bombing, a thing? Yeah, like taking like bombs of speed, I assumed, wasn't it? I don't, we're old, yeah. Brie. We're old. We don't understand these things. Over my head, I was kind of hoping that Cindy would ask her, like, even though they were having an intimate moment at that point, I was yeah. kind of hoping that Cindy would go, uh, what? What's the... What's the what's speed the, was it? Speed it was it? It was it? Do you know, at <laughs> first, because she was talking about the motorbike, I thought she were on yeah. about, they were doing speed speed balls on a motorbike is or something. Stunt? Is that a motorbike yeah, stunt? Yeah. <laughs> and then she said, and he went <laughs> into cardiac arrest, and I was like, oh, that can't be from... Riding no, a motorbike, drugs, then, surely. drugs, yeah. very druggy, very druggy thing. So that's an. It was an interesting sort of um, look into Gina's past there, uh, and interesting to sort of see where this drug stuff really began. Mm. Um, interesting to sort of see the impact that it's had on her and George's relationship. That was that's that's interesting. So yeah, some really really nice stuff for Gina this week. I was excited by it. Um, but all of this is linked into the J stuff, which we will be discussing next. <laughs> On to the final story of the week now, and this was Jay. Now, Jay had a rough time this week. Now, I wonder, and this is risking all sorts of angry debates from listeners online, because it always is when it comes to Ben. Um, where, where are you with the Ben stuff? Did you think there was any hypocrisy this week with Ben? No, I think Ben's right about everything <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I thought it was all disgusting. I was team Gina oh. this week. I wish she was sticking up for... Uh, uh, Gina Jay. was great, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's tricky, isn't it? I mean... I get I'm it. A... Yeah, sorry, I yeah. sound like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not condoning what he's doing. No, but... no, 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 no. I know what you mean. I just think that... I, I, to put it like this, I was quite glad that Jay return said what he said at some at some points during the week you know well not all yeah. of it there was a comment i think yeah, it was yeah, last yeah. i think it was a last week that he made a comment about ben's bulimia which was a bit out of order remember that one i thought that was that made me go oh jay no bit far so i didn't agree with him saying that yeah, um yeah. however some of the stuff that ben was getting a little bit sanctimonious about this week i understand it all right the thing is with this storyline i knew this was going to happen as soon as it was announced that jay and callum and ben were going to go into this sort of trio parenting thing i knew we were going to end up here where ev- like the ballon fans are kind of all against jay at the moment against jay for christ's sake think about that for a moment Jay is a villain to them right now, which is insane, considering how much support Jay has given Ben over the years. Like, it's insane that we're now at a point where they're thinking that Jay is a bad person. I know. Uh, I haven't even got words. Just get on with it, will you? <laughs> for God's sakes. Come <sighs> on, people. Come I mean, on. I, it's his does brother. It... They're allowed to have arguments and disagreements when they're going through one of the toughest times, especially mm. Jay. It's yeah. pretty much the toughest time of his life, like one of. Like, I mean, give the kid a break. There's some aspects of it I see where Ben is coming from because it is because yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't want Lexi around this sort of thing. He doesn't want Lexi don't around kept, drugs and pre- don't prostitutes. Don't around my kid. Fair, fair enough. Yeah. That's a perfectly fair yeah, thing yeah, to say. Yeah. But the fact that Ben was sort of acting a little bit high and mighty at times and, and you know, acting as though he's never done anything like this. Like, yeah. th- need I remind you, Benjamin, of the period that you had a couple of years ago, you know? It's... Mm-hmm, exactly. You've been there and people were there for you. Callum as well, like, acting as though Jay was, you know, acting as though he, as though Jay was pushing all help and support away from him and that Callum had done everything that he could in order to help Jay and it was still was making I mean... no difference. He did punch Callum, let's not forget that. He did. He... So yes, there he is <laughs> there is that. Yes, he so did. So kind of uh, yeah, it's... At the end of the day, it all comes down to the fact that Jay's struggling, he's grieving. Yeah. Gina is the one out of everyone, surprisingly, is giving him the right support. But you can understand also why Ben and Callum are unable to offer that support at the minute. Yes. Because Lex is their priority and they can't have you know, that risk of him being off his face or having drugs in the house, let's mm. be honest. Yeah, absolutely. So what I is agree the with alternative that. for Jay there? Where is he supposed to go? I Bill don't is know. the same. He's got a similar situation. He's got kids at home. Yeah. So I, where yeah. is Jay supposed to go, really, when he's in this state? I know. I don't know. I it's agree. a difficult one, isn't it? But I they agree. have been too harsh with him. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. I, I get it. I get 
why Jay is struggling at the moment. But like, you know, Ben revealed the whole Nadine stuff in the middle of the pub this week. That felt unnecessary. He didn't need to do yeah. that. This is the thing that Ben does. Like he will, when he's angry and sort of feeling like he's been put out, he will lash out and he will say things. And he always has done this. You know, mm. so it's a very it was a very Ben thing to do this week to sort of reveal all of Jay's immediate problems to Billy. Because the thing is, Billy wouldn't have known about any of this if it wasn't for Ben. <laughs> it's like none of this would have, you know. So it's just sort of. He was really understanding though when he thought it was at the start. The drugs. Yeah, yeah. But then as soon as he found out about the prostitute, which. Yeah. I'm a I think bit confused. the thing is with that, I think they are seeing because the fact that Nadine looks so much like Lola, they mm. are seeing it as he is insulting Lola's memory. I don't think mm. they're really considering the fact that to Jay, that is purely a level of comfort. He, yes, he made a move on Nadine last week, but that was because he was off his head or drunk or one of them. You know, he was either on drugs or drunk and he made a move on Nadine and clearly instantly regretted it and saw it as he was cheating on Lola, essentially. So, it's just I, the, the thing that they, they were missing between themselves this week was actual conversation. All right, there was a lot of shouting going on. There was a lot of arguing going on without any of them actually listening to one another. I think was the main problem. Well, actually, the only person who was sat listening to Jay was Lexi, and she was being very Ironically. mature and understanding. And then Ben was saying, "Right, that's enough." And Lexi were trying to say, "No, come on, yeah. I want, he's, he's explaining it," and he was trying to explain even the Nadine thing to her. And he yeah. didn't get that chance, whereas none of them were actually listening to what he was saying. Mm. Had they been listening and not responding reactively with anger, they might have gone, oh, I can kind of understand why he's yeah. doing it. It's obvious. They couldn't, the bottom line comes down to this is very out of character for Jay to get with a prostitute. And yeah, it shows how much he's struggling. And they should mm. be there for him. That yeah. That's what it comes down to. Whether yeah. that's him living with them, which they maybe can't, you know, supply yeah. at the minute when they've got children around but they can support him in other ways at least yeah i mean i kind of i get not like i get that right okay so while you were in this headspace you can't live here around lexi i get that i do get i do understand that it's just you know the fact that if you look back at the history of jay and ben you know yeah. And Jay said it all this week, and I had to kind of like, yeah, I sort of agree with what you're saying there, Jay. And I'm not doing this to, and I'm not saying this just to hate on Ben, all right? But there, there was levels of hypocrisy there, and Jay called him out on it, which, you know, and I get, I get where Ben was coming from in terms of protecting Lexi, but I feel like he was being sort of, he was sort of batting away his own sort of history with grief and drugs and everything that he's gone through and the way that he has sort of lashed out at people around him when he's been going through some stuff um and not really taking that into consideration when he's looking at his brother essentially kind of unconscious on the sofa so in some ways what ended up happening with jay this week was a bit of a blessing because it sort of made them all realize how important jay actually is to them it were it struck me as ironic though in some ways because when Jay were passed out when he took the cat at um, Ben and Callum's flat. Yeah. Ben walked in and was like, oh, my God, don't be dead, don't be dead. Then as soon as he woke up, he was like, well, you can F off, mate. I, I know. Let's just leap to, oh, my God, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Um, There was a moment this week when they started out, because Lexi wanted to scatter Lola's ashes around the square, which is nice. Ooh, you can understand yeah. that. And there was a horrible moment this week. Nothing makes me gasp more on television when ashes get broke or get spilt or or like dropped or smashed on the floor and bits of lola all over the carpet that's difficult oh. to watch <laughs> you know it that's was. sad it's sad oh. like it's there is it's not the same thing if you then get your henry hoover and hoover it all up and then put it back in the urn it's not the same thing because you don't know that's all lola there could be bits of dust and all sorts in there it's not all going to be lola if you do that well i was thinking i would have gone out bought a brand new sweeping brush and pan yeah, and scooped it all up and put it back in the urn. And if there's bits of fluff in it, well, what can you do? It's happened yeah. now, aren't it? Not the first time Lola would have been all over the carpet at some point, will it? And you know, yeah. so. <laughs> it's, but yeah. did you not think that they were they all blamed Jay for that immediately? And actually, I thought it was Billy's fault. Well, I mean, it was. I mean, you, you could sort of see it coming, couldn't you? You could see it coming as soon as the urn sort of like was it up. Peter were like, oh god, here we go. So you could sort of see where it was going. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I mean, it was an accident, wasn't it? I don't know if it was necessarily... Yeah, it was. Yeah, but they were like, oh, Jay, look at what you've done. And Jay were blaming himself. But actually, it was Billy yeah. tried to snatch it off him, and that's what made them all fall out on floor. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I mean, that scene was kind of just like, 
well, one of you wants to keep these ashes. So clearly the only way this yeah. is going to play out is that look, like, it's going to be on the carpet in a minute. So I kind of, I, I did kind of get that. It, it was an accident, but even though Ben was quite keen to to, to, to Lola, it wasn't, it was Jay. Jay did it. Yeah. You know, like so. Again. So it's, uh, but I was pleased with how Ben ended at the end of the week when he realized just how much Jay means to him. Um, what are your thoughts on how this all played out with the car crash and, and everything? I was surprised we didn't see it, but yeah. I actually thought it was quite effective that we didn't see it. What do you think? That was my initial thought, because obviously at the end of Wednesday's episode, we had the police go in, and I thought, well, that's weird that we've not seen the crash. Mm. And then I thought, oh, we're going to have a flashback episode next day, and we're going to see him, see whether he did it intentionally or not. Yeah. Because did he, I don't think he crashed on purpose. I think he just wanted to drive to Margate personally. Uh, yeah. And um, I think he was too high to drive and then smashed into a tree. I don't think it was a suicide yeah. thing at all myself yeah. at the moment. We may personally, learn different. Yeah. We may learn different later, but I don't think it was uh, intended at all. Yeah. So then I didn't really know how Thursdays were going to pan out, but it actually worked. I was surprised, actually. It kind of put us in the same boat as the characters trying to find him, didn't it? Which I thought was quite an interesting exactly. way of doing it. If it was literally yeah. just because they couldn't afford to do a car crash <laughs> because they've got a fire coming up and they couldn't afford to then smash a car into a tree, it was a good way I of doing uh, that. Was, uh, so did I. Uh, but if it, if that was the case, I thought that they worked around it very, very well. Mm, if that was the very case. Well. I don't know how expensive it is to crash a car. I imagine quite expensive. Do you remember? Mm. Well, we we had a couple of car crashes last a couple of years ago with Janine and Linda, and the car crash yeah. that they did when they found it when they drove into that tree looked expensive. So it, to make it look good, I imagine it does cost a few pennies. So if they're trying to save, I don't know. I don't know. But could have just said, they could have just edited that footage though. To be fair, you can do wonders with it. Uh, and... You can. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but it was it was. I thought it was quite effective. Really frustrating that nobody would or could tell anybody where Jay was. Like, what do you think is oh. like turning up at their doorstep like that? Going right, there's been an accident. We can't tell you who it was. We can't tell you where they are or what has happened. But there's been an accident. So we're trying to get hold of Jay's next of kin. Like, uh, what reaction do they ex- do they expect when they're going to do stuff like that? And even then, when you turn up at the hospital and say, "Is Jay Brown here?" Uh, I can't tell you that. I'm afraid. I was sat with my mum watching this, who is a nurse in the NHS and well, more than a nurse. She's kind of quite high up in terms of her position. And so I was asking her, like, is, really, is this always true? Because I'm frustrated. I would I would go mad. I would be doing what Billy is doing here if this was me. And she was like, yeah, well, that's the law. You know, you can't. So it's true. All of this was true. However, what I'm not entirely sure if it's true or not is the fact that Callum then walked in, flashed his ID badge, and two minutes later, Billy and Honey are sat in Jay's room. <laughs> I don't know if that works. <laughs> like, Jay, Callum think... and his police badge. I think the, the they did it all, you know, so nitpicky is not the word, but, you know, accurately. You yeah. Know, that you, you can't be next. I think it probably, I, I even think. Probably Callum would, yeah. The police badge, yeah. Because yeah. he is police. He could have just said, oh, I've come to investigate. Where is he? And then just gone oh, to Billy. That's true. That's way, true. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. where he is. Yeah. I Callum just will hope... go, I'll risk my job for it. I'm not bothered. Oh, Callum you know, does when Jay time. comes around. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Callum doesn't care that much this. about his job. Yeah. He always, he's done much worse than this in the past. Yeah, no, that's not a problem for Callum. Not to do that in his sleep. Um, and he knows when Jay comes around, he's not going to complain and go, you shouldn't have done that, Callum, you know. <laughs> yeah. so... um, I mean, talking of Thursday's episode, really good episode, right? And it's mm-hmm. sort of the episode that we've come to expect with this era, that it will do without breaking a sweat. Just one of those really sort of intimate character studies, sort of focus on a reasonably small group of characters, just with some really nice dialogue. Billy talking about how Jay is the son that he never had, but the son that he chose. That was some really nice stuff. Honey being the fantastic character that she's become recently. It's really nice supporting character that you kind of feel that if anything kicks off these days, Honey would be all right to deal with it. And Honey wasn't yeah. like that one of not, not so long ago. And Honey has become such a strong supporting character for everyone in that family. I love it. Mm. I love Honey so much. I moment. even, my favourite part with Honey was when they went to sit down in the waiting room and Billy said, mm. well, what are we doing? We don't even know his ear. And she went, oh, he's his here. face gave it away. His oh, ear. he's here. Definitely. Yeah. I love liked it. that. Yeah, genius. Yeah. I love Honey so much. Um, she's so much more on the ball than she used to be, isn't she? Like, she's mm. still got those little ditzy malapropism moments, but they're so much rarer than they used to be. That used to be, like, the very basis of Honey's dialogue at one point. Yeah, that's And now they yeah. they really have sort of nailed her and really got her right. And, mm. I, yeah, Honey is a, such a fantastic character these days. I love it. Um, but, yeah, that 
Thursday episode was so well done, wasn't it? Like everybody sort of talking and the uh, you kind of felt the realism of what it would be like to be in this situation. Sort of the mm. like sort of desperately trying to find out details, desperately trying to work out is he okay? Where is he? Is he even alive? Like I, you got mm. it completely. I thought it was really well handled. Do you know what I was surprised at though? That when Billy said I'm his dad, they asked for ID. Is that is that a thing? Probably. Probably. If they're being that if they're being that thorough about who they're allowed to see and who they're allowed to tell information mm. to, I imagine that's the only way they can find out, right? I was just thinking my parents wouldn't have ID on him. So Well you could might have your driver you, know you might have your driver's license on you or something, mightn't you? My parents wouldn't. But you're not going. Well, they're not coming to see you then, are they? No, clearly, clearly. <laughs> well, people might not. What are they going to do? Make them go home to get their ID to come. I did it. Maybe, just, maybe. Sit right that bit, but yeah, perhaps. Um. So yeah, I mean, what about Jay and Gina? Is there? Do you reckon that's going to develop into anything? See, I can we just point out that I called all this ages ago. Yes, she did. And Gina and the oh, I know. Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah. Yes, she um, did. And it's played out really, really nicely the way it's been done. Yeah, I yeah, you did well there. Well done. Well, I thought they were going to be doing drugs together, but it's turned out she's been helping him not do the drugs. Um, really interesting way of doing that, actually, as well, wasn't mm, it? Like that's yeah. not the way I expected it to go. You kind of thought that Gina was going to be the one that kind of put jay back on the drugs i almost yeah. had in some ways you kind of thought gina was going to be the one that would play the anto would be the antonio to to J to jay yeah, yeah, so to that's jay. yeah yeah definitely yeah, but really i don't nice think i don't think they're gonna have a relationship but he has been getting close not... to her they were you know we were holding her hand when they were talking but i saw that in a you're currently my only comfort because i don't have anyone else who's fighting yeah that corner. that's how i viewed it but then he did touch a leg. But again, I didn't view it like that. I feel like they're almost brother and sister. It's interesting. I can see them together, if I'm honest. I feel like, given Jay's relationship history, Gina would fit into that quite well. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't can, hate I them can together. See it, but I, I, I am for people being friends, though. I like oh, I agree. Friends, a nice I do. Friendship. I, I totally agree. Um, but I think this is the sort of week that will have brought them closer as a pair and it's not mm. felt random it's felt quite sort of deliberate and very well done and very well sort yeah. of kind of earned so i yeah i can see i don't know maybe you're right but i feel like if they are going to get together this is going to be sort of the catalyst to it yeah interesting stuff though mm. so how long have we got jay in a coma for this sort of thing never tends to last very long i remember linda was in a coma for about 10 minutes so it, yeah. <laughs> so i don't know how long jay's going to be in a coma for well, I've seen I, all week, you know, I try and avoid spoilers and then I'm in the supermarket and what's on TV has got, you know, Jay on front front cover going, Jay, Halloween dead. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake, he's not well, going to be dead though. I knew that. He's not going to be that. dead, but Jamie Borthwick didn't mind winding the fans up a little bit. Did you know, did you see this? He, yeah. <laughs> he um, released he a... Did his... that? Hey? Did he actually post that? Cause I yeah, he actually he posted say, it. No, he didn't. Yeah, he oh, actually posted right. it. He, uh, he's, like, just, if you didn't see this, Jamie Borthwick uh, posted uh, an Instagram picture uh, with, with a picture of Kid Jay and saying, oh, rest in peace, Jay. We had a laugh, didn't we? <laughs> so when it's like, Jay's not dying, you naughty boy. That's not happening. But it got people talking, got people talking about the storyline. So that was, yeah, I thought that was quite effective, but it was naughty, naughty Jay, me. Yes. Well, it were. It worked though, didn't it? Got people talking. Indeed. I just, so I reckon next... I reckon a few days a week he'll be in Yeah, wake up with a bit of a headache, it'll be all right. Well, are they gonna have tested him for drugs, found drugs in his system? Is he gonna get in a lot of trouble for being behind the wheel? That's very true. How yeah, but then they've got Callum there. Callum can sort anything out in terms of legal pro legal impropriety. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Yes. He's, already, he's just got nicked as well for possession. That's true. He's had a car crash. If they've checked for that in his bloods, which I would have thought they maybe do under these circumstances. He drove into a tree, so they definitely yeah, would have tested him for something, for sure. For sure. Especially, yeah. if, they, especially if he's now in a coma. Of course they would. Yeah. yeah 100%. Mm. Yeah, you're right, though. I didn't think of that. Yeah, he's definitely going to be in trouble with the police when he wakes up, isn't he? Oh, dear. Mm. So Jay's life is not going to get any easier from this point onwards, but we'll see how it goes. But I thought loads of really, really good performances in this storyline across the whole board this week. Um, mm. And like I say, I loved where Ben was at the end of the week, where they had that nice phone call and he left Jay a nice message. Oh, um, that was so nice, I thought that yeah. was, that was a like powerful so. moment. Yeah, that was a really powerful moment. So I'm pleased we are where we are in terms of what the character, where the characters are. Is this Jay's kind of 
off the rails time at an end now, do you think? Is this going to be sort of the climax to it, or do you reckon it's going to carry on from here? Oh, good point. I don't know, actually. It should, yeah, it feels like the end of it. You reckon this will be the moment where he's like, yeah, well, okay, so I guess like I need it, a yeah, counsellor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe I should use that money that I've been spending on a prostitute yeah. for counselling instead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, let's do that. We'll see where he, see where he is when he wakes up. If he's that addicted, it might not be that simple. So it depends how they want to play it. I've got to say, I have enjoyed Jay and the drugs because it very much fits in with Jay's history. I saw a few people saying, well, why would Jay be on drugs? You know, why would you do this? But it's it totally fits in with Jay's history. Like someone who has been on drugs before, if they are going through something like this, it's kind of it's perfectly possible for them to fall back into old habits you know gina's a gina is a living proof of that it it works mm-hmm. so i thought the way that they this has all played out has been really character led really true to character i think it's been i think it's been good i've been really really impressed with how they've sort of dealt with the grieving process of jay and it has given jamie borthwick some amazing material to work with so and he is an amazing actor and i'm really really pleased um so that's that i think for this week uh gold starry who do you think I was I was torn, but you know what? I've already given it to her before. I'm gonna have to give it to Gina because I really, really enjoyed Gina this week. I was gonna give it to Gina as well. I have to well, say, we yeah, we both, both do it to Gina. Both took gold stars to Gina, but uh, a tough competition this week because I thought there were some amazing performances from Billy, from Jay, Jay. From ben. I was yeah, torn between Lexi. Jay and Gina, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, really good stuff this week. But yeah, two gold stars to Gina. Right, ladies and gents, that's this week's discussion over and done with. We shall complete this wonderful podcast because we're back, hurrah, uh, with some comments from you guys. Right, we shall start with a comment from Tammy Table, who says, I feel so bad for Jay, but I completely understand Ben not wanting him around Lexi right now. And he did let him talk to her tonight. He had a traumatic childhood and doesn't want that for his daughter. See, I get that. I do totally get that. Yeah, that is a fair point, actually. It's just, you know, it is just sometimes Ben is sometimes now and again falls himself into a massive hypocrisy and just forgets about what he's had what people have had to deal with with him mm. before he sort of applies his own anger to people like this is the thing is it was one of those really weird situations where i got where ben was coming from but at the same time it's kind of like we could do you know just a little bit of self-awareness there benjamin that might help you case a little bit you know but yeah I, I do get that i do get it i know that he was doing it from a good place but it's just now and again it's like oh, ben come on you know? It's the way that he goes off, isn't it? He could have yeah. handled it a lot better. Yeah. But that's Ben. That's Ben all over, isn't it? You could have handled that better, Ben. <laughs> it's like it's that Definitely. typical Mitchell. It's the Mitchell way of doing things, isn't it? Talking of Mitchells, where the hell was Phil this week? That's what I was thinking. You know, when you know when Billy split up, we didn't mention obviously Keanu and Jay had a little altercation in Square. Oh yeah, they? yeah, yeah. They did, yeah. Um. And it were Billy who broke it up, and I thought normally that would be Phil's role, wouldn't it, doing something like that? And that's what made me go, where's Phil? Yeah, it's a shame because they've really done well, re- uh, like re- in the past couple, like year or so, of really kind of rebuilding the Jay and Ben relationship because that was missing for a, for a couple of years. Um, but they also, but they have seemed to have completely forgotten that Phil and Jay were really, really close at one point. So I'm mm. kind. Of, I think that what they're doing is they're sort of putting Billy into that father role because at one point that yeah. was Phil. So I, but I did, I really enjoyed the Jay and Phil dynamic. So I hope that we return to that at some point. Cause that was really, really good, but I get the role that they're putting Billy into now, but it's, yeah, I feel like Phil would have been quite a good addition to things that were going on this week. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, uh, I've got one from our Instagram page yes. from glitchy dates who says, a sad and difficult week watching Jay fall apart whilst his loved ones judged and took away their support. I agree. Very hypocritical of the Mitchells, given their colourful history with unhealthy coping mechanisms. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's a Mitchell his trait. <laughs> it's a, that's a very Mitchell trait, isn't it? Just unhealthy ways of... <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is very, yeah. very true. But, yeah. you know, without that, where is the drama? You've also got to ask yourself, you know, where is, is the confrontation? That. Where are the arguments? And where is the, where's the story sometimes as well, you know? Well, you would have thought at least one of them would have supported him. Like Billy did at first. And then for mm. some reason, the prostitute was the icing on the cake for Billy. And that was when he went, yeah. no, nah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Can't it's... have a bar with it now. Done. Yeah. It's just the insults of Lola's memory, isn't it? I think yeah. it's, the, it's the problem. That's what that's what pushed him over the edge with that. He understood the drug stuff because he understood Jay's history. He understood mm. why Jay was there. 
but I, yeah, the 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 Nadine stuff I think was just the straw that broke the camel's back for him, which was yeah, it was a shame, but you kind of understand that. Um, and then finally, we've got an email from Jordan Brownhill who says, "Hi, Twenty After Dark. Hi, Jordan. Chris Clenshaw wasn't lying when he described Ivani and Priya as fun." I've seen fans complaining about the age of the actor who plays Ivania. She's much older than her character. Personally, I don't see a problem with it, as there's multiple reasons why a show would cast someone older and more experienced. Some people are suggesting there's a much deeper reasoning, suggesting there will be a twist when she's not Ravi's, but I don't see what the point of that would be. What's your thoughts, and is the age difference noticeable to you as a viewer also? Um, There was something mentioned on Twitter about this, and Aaron Thiara K uh, replied to this and said that Ravi is 35 years old. That's fine. I'll have to find the tweet. But he said that Ravi is 35. Uh, and then Nugget is 15 and Avani is 14. So it does work out. You could like, so what? My math is awful, but that would, it, it does work. You know, it, it does work. I have to say, I didn't think that the actress was that much older, actually. I thought she, I thought she kind of portrayed that age quite well. I didn't really question it. It's interesting because when we saw the photos at first when they were being introduced, I did think, God, she looks a lot older. Did you? Then when we've... Yeah, yeah, I did. Because she... there were a few people saying which one's the daughter and which one's the mum. Yeah, but which I is... thought that was more which... about how young Priya looked rather than how old Ivani looked, weirdly. <laughs> yeah, in some respect. I think there's, there's like a middle ground where they could uh, yeah, yeah, pass yeah. a certain age. Like a pass a sister, then... for sure, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then once we saw Ivani on screen, I was like, no, just believed yeah. that she were 14, to be honest. Yeah. But they did, she was going around saying, oh, I'm pretending to be older and stuff. So maybe they're trying to write in that she's trying to look older as well. So that'd fit a character. Uh, that's true. She, I I had to laugh at the fact that she arrived and was instantly trying to flirt with all the daddies of Wolford. <laughs> just... Zach and Martin, yeah. I mean, fair, good taste. Let's be fair here. You know, that's if she's going to go after any daddies, those are two good daddies to go after, in my opinion. Does that hint that maybe this person's got a point? That's why they've chosen an older actor. Is she going to get with an older person? Possibly. Is that what they were hinting at with that? Was that... You never know. My overanalyzing again. <laughs> no, I think anything's possible at this stage. It's, mm. it's, it's yeah, it's interesting. I am very excited to see the future for Priya and Nirvana, I have to say. I really am because they are two good characters, uh, and, and I thought it was genius to give the Panasars two new ladies in it because I didn't realize quite how much um, kind of testosterone there was around that family. Male heaven. Suki, yeah. yeah, Suki was the it was a sausage fest. Suki was the only Suki was the only woman <laughs> there after Ash left. So to give it two women yeah. is a really really clever move, and it really really works. I'm very 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 excited. Um, so. Unless you have anything more to say, Ree, that is this yeah. week's Albert Square After Dark. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can do any of the following. You can find us on Facebook at Albert Square After Dark, on Instagram and Twitter at E20 After Dark. You can like and subscribe on our YouTube channel, Albert Square After Dark, and find us on all your favourite podcast sites. You can drop us an email at e20afterdarkpodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to buy us a coffee, you can do so by going on buymeacoffee.com forward slash e20 after dark yay thank you very much we're back ladies and gentlemen we missed you loads and i haven't got any more holiday left for work until like april so <laughs> to where we're so fine. unless i have plans we'll be here every week oh you're not allowed that Ray. i'm afraid no oh. no 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 uh so we're going to be here for the for the foreseeable now you'll be delighted to know and i cannot wait to see what kicks off next week until then it is goodbye from me I see you,